immediately. Come on, we have to talk about it. Trump got shot at. And I, I do have to say, Stalt, I want you to play Keep the clip down. from one month ago on this show. We talked about things are a little bit too calm. There hasn't been a political assassination attempt in some time. Secret Service is lax. Yeah. Same thing with I don't want what it, like the Secret Service. Like they haven't had an assassination on the president attempt since the 80s, right? Someone's got it. You know they're slacking off by now. They're like, it's been 20 years. It's been 20 years. Nobody's... I don't know if I can legally say this outright, but... <laughs> hey, okay. what's going on, guys? It's General Sim and Papa Poob. Back at it again for another Forehead Fables podcast. It's the Sams. Yep. We're here. Poob, I'm going to force this on you because you we're, haven't... Wait. Oh, okay. I was gonna, you're not going to do it on your own. But Poob's opened up a merch store. Oh, I was going to do it on my own. And That's why banging. I'm wearing the hat and the yeah. shirt. Yeah, guys, go to papapoob.com to get some merch. Uh, and I think the first shipments, I did like an unofficial, just told my Twitch chat. And I've been having nightmares that people are going to get them and they'll, they'll touch the shirt and it'll dissolve in their hands or something. <laughs> yeah. But. I haven't heard any complaints yet. There and is the always orders have arrived. There is always a cool gimmick to your to your merchandise. You know, like those stickers that you can then place. You can move, you can move the movable stickers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like little posters. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. And these stickers, I'm pretty sure, entire new distributor. I think they use the exact same stickers. So I still have some from my first batch stuck on my wall yeah. that I haven't moved whatever. And I tried to be very honest in the descriptions of some of the shirts. One of them, there's a little white line. If you buy the shirt in black, I say that. Okay. I say, I, I can't get rid of it. The <laughs> website won't allow me to get rid of it. The, the, the I have one dial laughter shirt. That's like the death of Tinky. I'm yeah. like this, this shirt, honestly, like in person, it doesn't look as good as the picture. If you really want like a dial laughter shirt, I'd wait. Cause I'm, I'm going to have like a pop goblin shirt in the future. Yeah. I just hold back. I have one shirt just for poor people. I make <laughs> maybe 50 cents a sale. So <laughs> don't buy that. I didn't think about that. That's like the main sold shirt. And it is. Come on, guys. Give me more money. You got to buy that. <laughs> I'm well, losing one... my ass on shipping yeah. here, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Don't do not buy that shirt. If you live in Australia, I think I have lost money on a couple of those. Yeah. Um, and oh, also, my God, dude. There's troops. Whenever if I get a merch order wow. from some guy wow. that's on a military base in like <laughs> the middle of Africa, I get fucking scalped. I yeah, get absolutely do scalped that. alive. Yeah. Come back home, soldier. Come home safe. <laughs> yeah. Buy it. Get it shipped buy to your it in mom's Iowa place. or something. Yeah. Not your wife because be she's not going to be you. there waiting for you when you get back. No. It is, she's banging guys like me. And he's wearing you're out He's there. wearing my shirt, okay? Yeah. Get it shipped he's to your wearing mom. Sam's shirt. Those are the kind of people that wear those shirts. Uh and there's even one, there's a sweater. I mean, I have it, right? There's this sweater. Pretty cool. I love this design. I had the idea, and then I gave it to Purples, and she made it a lot better. Mm -hmm. But I would not buy this sweater, because, to be honest, they gave me a bunch of sample credit, and I just wanted to buy, I wanted a sample of the most expensive mm -hmm. thing they had. So it's like a $70 sweater. Ooh. It is nice. I personally would not buy that. Yeah. But if you're... An oil tycoon or something. <clears throat> please buy. It. Please buy. Have it. you have you seen like Sam Hyde's merch drops? He, no. he went out of his way to get like the most ridiculous. It's like it's a very cool looking beanie, but they're cashmere, and they're oh. they're selling on his like merch store. They're like three hundred bucks, like a three hundred dollar beanie. They're sold out. Reversible. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they sold out in like one second. But. I. It is fun. I, I don't think I'm at the level. I'm at that entry merch level where it's just you're pretty limited yeah. in what you can do. Yeah. I do want to do some like cooler stuff. Also, I want to do posters in the future, but I think I'll do it like we did the posters we sent out where I'll just do, you know, 50 of them or something. Yeah. And you just you just Venmo me and I'll send it to you because the posters on there, it's like 
you pay 15 bucks and I get like $2. I don't know. I just, I have a good printer. I'd just rather print them out myself. And then I can write a little note on the back. I, I like doing the, the posters because then I like that. I got it's to just, get, I like to uh, sitting on the couch, rolling them up. Yeah. It's fun. I like giving them to Abby and then having her call me almost oh, in yeah. tears at the UPS store. Cause she's like, they're scanning them individually and asking me all these <laughs> questions. About and I don't uh, know yeah, who I these people think, are. Okay. Never mind, guys. I'm not going to be doing that because I don't have an Abby. So, hey, Happy, <laughs> yeah. you drop these off on your way to work. I feel like he would um, do that. He would, I, and I feel like he would I'd give him a little cut. Yeah, I feel like he would manage the questions a lot better because he's like a business person. Yeah, yeah, he he went with me the other day because well, it's a long story, but he is totally. I mean, he's the man of the house. We've discussed this, yeah. but uh, I went to a. I called AutoZone. Obviously, there are bigger news that we will address in a minute, guys. Okay, there's been a lot of stuff going on in the world. Like what? <laughs> um, and my car was just bricked because uh, my alarm still goes. You know, it's draining the shit out of my battery. Call AutoZone. Hey, guys, will you change my battery if I go in there and buy one? They're like, yeah, of course, as long as it's not complicated. I said, well, you know, there's like one bar over it that you just have to unscrew. You know, obviously, it's, like, not a hard process, even for a guy like me. Yeah. But I, I asked them, and they're like, yeah. I go in there five minutes later, and they check out the battery. Also, Jesus Christ, like, the oldest man ever was working there, and the computers went down. And it took – I just had to sit there silently with him for about 10 minutes, and he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, and then – I buy the battery. I'm like, all right, can you put it in my car? And they're like, oh, we don't do that. <laughs> okay, well, I just called. I think I spoke to you five minutes ago, and he's like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> all right. And I'm like, well, you know, I'll go home. I'll, I'll do it, I guess. There's no Riley's five seconds away from it. I just dox myself. I mean, there's auto zones and I write O'Reilly's everywhere. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I went over there. I'm like, I have this battery. Can I, will you guys just like do it? put it in my car because all also all my shit all the components of my car are so rusted all the bolts and nuts i'm like i don't want to deal with it it's also really hot out. Wait, you bought it at autozone uh, yeah and then i walked over to o'reilly's and well, said i, I like, want you people to put it in well i was like can i do like what if i just give you like 20 bucks so you guys do this? and they're like you can only do that if you buy the battery here I'm like, okay son of a bitch <laughs> so i go home on my little jump started car the guy assured me like 50 times like this battery will work too big. Did not fit in the slot in my car. <laughs> so then Happy had to drive me back there. And then he was like, let me handle this. And he talked to the guy. He's like, you fucked. Like, this battery does not fit and blah, blah, blah. And I just stood there like, yeah, yeah you, you get it. You tell him. Get him. Yeah, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Put him in a body bag. And then Happy figured it all out. And then we got back to the house and I was like, I'll, I'll do it. And he just basically did 90% of, of it. it. Yeah. And he's like, no, I actually like, like doing this. I'm like, I, I'm going to fucking marry you, man. <laughs> you are, what would I do without you? I gave him a big hug at the end. I'm like, God, you are, you are making me like a worse person by yeah. not letting me do Imagine how things, good but. you would have felt, though, like after putting in that battery. It's such a. Well, I even thought about that. Yeah. I was like, look at me, a little grease monkey. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, stand back, dear. I got this. And then Spark shot at one point. It was really cool. And you were over there. See that? Yeah. Yeah, Are biting you okay? your fingernails. I had to ground him with a big bear hug from behind. <laughs> yeah. I had to rip him off the battery. because. Um, I do, yeah, I those... do like any little thing around the house. Such a huge rush. Abby loves it, too. Like, if I, a door was yeah. squeaking, and I was just like, put some grease on the hinges. WD-40. Yeah. She immediately is like, oh, my God, you fixed the door? Yeah. Oh. Such a man. Oh, yeah, strutting through the house, dude. Somebody's getting a blowjob tonight. I greased a hinge. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. It's the little things. Yeah, it's the little things for sure. It's the little things. Yeah. <sighs> By the way, uh, okay, what, if you oh. want to talk immediately, come on, we have to talk about it. Trump got shot at. And I, I do have to say, Stalt, I want you to play Keep the clip down. from one month ago. On this show, we talked about things are a little bit too calm. There hasn't been a political assassination attempt in some time. Secret service is lax. Yeah. Same thing with I don't want, what it, like the Secret Service. Like they haven't had an assassination on the president attempt since the eighties, right? 
Someone's got it. You know they're slacking off by now. They're like, it's been 20 years. It's been 20 years. Nobody's... I don't know if I can legally say this outright, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know where we're going yeah. with this, but no, yeah. I don't. Wait until after the election, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see which way the wind what blows. what we're talking about. And, and we did not, maybe, we did not do a call to arms or anything. No, we didn't. No. Legally, <laughs> yeah. we did not. Yeah. There was there was a couple winks, mm -hmm. a couple sly smiles, but that is not. But what's a wink? Yeah, it's nothing but Flirty. half a blink. That's not yeah. a call to arms. But it wasn't. Did you? I cannot emphasize enough. Did you see that the like a lot of Trump supporters are now going out of their way to like just completely destroy people that like laughed at the assassination attempt. Like they're just yeah. hunting them down, like making sure they get fired and shit. So we do, we do not yeah, we, take this lightly I didn't think at that forehead was, fables. I didn't think it was funny at all. Um, now no, that I realize how much they care. <laughs> yeah. But um, all I do want to say is if somebody like comically came out of nowhere and like crippled Biden with a bat, like we might snicker a little bit. I mean, like who wouldn't, you know? They just got kneecapped. Yeah, they're something. politicians, guys. They're not superheroes, okay? They should kind of fear their constituents a little bit, I would think. Yeah, they yeah. should be in, on a, it. in a healthy, well, that's a healthy so society. Like, I think all politicians should be quaking in uh, their boots. I'm going <clears> to <throat> teeter around this very lightly after I've seen the, the, <laughs> the kind of social media outrage about it. Uh, Tenacious D broke up over it. Atrocity. I love that was the first rated R movie I ever saw was yeah. Pick a Destiny. And then now they're. Wow, you guys really canceled him, seriously. No, they self-canceled yeah. Jack Black was yeah, like, Jack Black. yeah, he pussied Well, he wants out. to be in the Minecraft movie. And he, so yeah, bad. he's got that Kung Fu Panda money to, to hold on yeah. to. Yeah, And so he, um, he can't yeah. be saying rock star shit while being in Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, it's uh, the most metal thing you can do. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> I meant more like what Kyle Gass was saying. Like, it's like the one job oh, you yeah. can just like say shit. Like, there's no HR department for a fucking rock yeah. star. It's like podcasting. Yeah. Sort of. Except for, I still think about that com that conversation we had with the lawyer where they're like, yeah, as long as you're not, <laughs> you know, lying, spreading lies and acting <laughs> yeah. like they're truth. So I'm like, oh, shit. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, it has been on my mind. Mm -hmm. It's been weighing heavily. <clears throat> um, yeah. Did you see that, that he was, was a wearing a, uh, the shooter was wearing a demolition ranch T-shirt? I did. Yeah. Thank That's God. the guy I went out to called? Texas to his ranch. Oh, I didn't even yeah. realize that. That's the same, gun range yeah, guy. Same guy. Your gun day. And I was, I was like talking about it. And I was like, "Damn, dude, that's insane amount of free advertising." Imagine all the people there, like, "What is Demolition Ranch?" And they go check it out and stuff. And I was talking about that. And <laughs> same thing with like the Christchurch shooter having all that PewDiePie stuff on his gun. Oh yeah, yeah. PewDiePie got a bunch of exposure over it. And I was like, <laughs> I was talking about that, and uh, it. Demolition Ranch's brother, Operator Drewski, was in my Twitch chat at the same time. He's like, what oh. the fuck, dude? I just got here. It was like the day after it happened. I was like laughing about it. He's like, dude, what the hell? It's just ruining our lives. <laughs> yeah, he's like, they, they've probably been up all night going like, what the fuck do we do? Probably getting phone calls. I'm going to have to put like a notice in my merch store. Like, do not put these stickers <laughs> on a weapon and then that you will use for... for Political shit. Political yeah. assassinations or something. Yeah. <clears throat> what a, well, that's a good thing about them not sticking very well. Maybe after one shot, they just fly <laughs> they off. Flutter off. They, they just disintegrate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your um, shirt will just like come off yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think by the time this episode comes out, there'll be another like history defining moment that we'll be totally behind on? Um, maybe. I don't know. Is yeah, it really mad? Top. People are still trying yeah. to like, have you this seen all the really. conspiracy theorists out there that are like, oh, there's also people up on the tower. And then there was also like the secret service was like, they're in on it. And yeah, uh, it's been a lot of, I think discourse that I've kind of just like, I don't totally, I don't know. I'm like, what? what? The fact Whatever. that like, at least Lee, Har Lee Harvey Oswald was a Marine at one point. Like he was, he was in the armed forces. This guy was like a loser by all accounts. They talked to his like high school yeah. classmates and they're like, this guy's just, a, he just gives off school shooter vibes. Like, I don't think it was a political thing. I think he was just like, I want to be famous before I 
before I go out because my life sucks. Oh. And he was registered Republican. That's interesting. But he also some infighting. Guys, yeah. come on, stop the infighting. <laughs> yeah, stop the infighting, guys. But uh, to think that like some shadow deep state wants to kill Trump so they get a fucking yeah. loser that can't even get into the marksman club in his high school to do the yeah, job. I think they they get a little bit of a a guy that could hit his mark yeah. a little more. Yeah. At least like Sweet. one lesson before the before the attempt. Yeah. But you know, what do I know? What do I know? Something like Alex Ryder Academy or something. Turn him into a, a, a living weapon. Yeah. <laughs> then unleash him. Yeah, don't just be like, this guy, nobody will miss this guy. Yeah. It is, nice it is funny, though. because 50 it, homeless guys in the, in the stands, shaky hands. If we get enough of them, that one of them, surely. <laughs> one of them will hit their mark. Um, yeah, and it did. I mean, just what incredible PR too, yeah. for Trump. Like, it just, that picture, just it, undeniably kind of hard. Yeah, and, pretty badass. Uh, just the, uh, I mean, what, is it, is it, is Biden dropping out yet? He sh- I like think he, third? I think he will. Yeah. He should, <laughs> I've got brain worms, and uh, <laughs> yeah. they're eating me. Yeah, the, My brain's so smart <laughs> that they're actually destroying me, because uh, we were talking about that last night, the, Guys, how funny it is. Yeah, that RFK's mind was yeah. not a sufficient place to sustain a a worm that's designed to eat brains. It's pretty funny. Yeah. It would be yeah. funny if Biden got brain worms and got smarter. Like the doctors are yeah. like, somehow your your cognitive abilities are coming back. He's like, guys, I don't know. <laughs> I Once have the this mind worm power got- of a thousand worms combined. <laughs> I'm as smart this thing's as like a, a Neuralink or something. This is it's like a symbiote. <laughs> like I feel like Venom. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be really cool. Uh, He's just fucking jacked. Yeah. Next time. Yeah. Yeah. I have the intelligence of a third grade. I mean, a third grader. <laughs> I'm that. I mean, oh my god, that'd be because uh, I was also I had one bullet point about the Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. You know, him ripping his shirt With off. The RNC. How, yeah. How awesome that is, and also like, what are the what are the libs gonna? Who are they gonna get that they can can't. beat Hulk Hogan? No, not only Hulk well, Hogan minimize Joe Biden. Now I'm thinking, not only it's a little bit of worm power. Not only did Hulk Hogan tear off his shirt and say Trump mania or whatever, but then Kid Rock got up there and said, uh, he said, "Man, it smells in here because Trump is the shit." <laughs> I think is oh, what he said. That's so hard. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody was oh, like, whoa! Yeah. You guys smell that? Oh, P.U. <laughs> uh, that's my president. Well, yeah, I, I don't know like what Biden could do at this point. I don't even think a, I I don't even think, think a brain worm could save him, to be honest. I think if, the, if he did a, a press release on the lawn of the White House and he burrowed out of the soil <laughs> and crawled out, people would be like, my God, he's back! Yeah, like, he is so strong he can burrow around the podium. The even podium, have to address the worms, two hundred feet away from Air Force One, he slides <laughs> down the stairs on the railing on his ass, you know, like a cool kid, and then burrows yeah. down into the ground and then pops up behind the podium. And a bunch of guys holding umbrellas <laughs> around him so the sun doesn't damage his worm body. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's someone comes up and mists his skin a little yeah. bit so he doesn't dry out. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. That- Okay, Biden, if you're listening to this, you've got one course. <laughs> yeah. You have to get brain worms. You have to have start to. eating tuna like crazy. <laughs> no, that kills you the worm. To... That kills the oh, worm. Wait. What gives the worm? I we never established, I don't think, how RFK got the worm. All I know is that he had the worm and then he right. ate so much tuna that the mercury in the, the heavy metals Destro- killed the okay. worm. It destroyed the worm. Yeah. Which it, the the cold calculating way that he said it was so it it honestly that's why he lost I think yeah. any chance of getting the presidency independent party you know don't even factor that in it was just how flippantly he said the worm's dead if I yeah. had a brain worm and it died I would be in mourning for a decade <laughs> I would have you wouldn't even see my face I would have a black veil my worm <laughs> dies that's like my kids dying you know and he's yeah. just like yeah I got a brain worm it died. What the fuck, yeah. dude? I don't want this. I don't want a cold, calculating man like that in the White House. I, I want yeah. a guy that wants to fuck his daughter in the White House. That's who I want. I want a guy that goes, ah, and a thousand worms come out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. 
he, I want a guy that can either summon, yeah, a bunch of worms. There's a trillion of us <laughs> under the earth. <laughs> Or, yeah. or I want a guy that has Hulk Hogan tearing his shirt off at his press conferences. And right now we've only got one. Yeah. We've got one. Yeah. We don't have Earthworm Jim or whatever crawling out of the ground. Earthworm Joe. That, <laughs> Earthworm Joe is his name. I don't know anything about... Is Earthworm Joe from Worms or is he the games? No, no. Earthworm Jim. Oh. No, no. Earthworm Joe would Wait, be Joe Biden. Joe no, Jim? it's Earthworm oh, Jim oh, is the game. I see what you're but Earthworm Joe would okay. be Joe Biden. No, Earthworm Jim that was would... its own game. That game fucking ruled. I love that game. Okay. I loved it. Um great art style and everything. I love this like class like Buck Rogers like alien like blaster is like the little laser oh, gun and everything. That's sick. Just Earthworm. A, just a Wait, funny guy. Makes it look like Earthworm Joe. Earthworm Jim. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just a cool. And he's design. shredded. Yeah, he's yeah, I love his little neck goes down into his suit and then all of a sudden just giant shoulders. What would be scarier if Biden had was an earthworm Joe or if he was a hunter from Halo and he was built from a thousand worms. million little worms? <laughs> um, he's just caught, he's got a big turtleneck on now <laughs> and his skin's moving. <laughs> And his body is huge. I think Hulk I think, Hogan huge. Uh, he would lose his relatability. I think if he was Hunter style, from he he would yeah. just be too menacing. Um, definitely Earthworm Jim style. Yeah, because the Earthworm, Earthworm Jim, Jim could rock aviators the same way Joe Biden can wear them. So I think he would still kind of people would be able to make that logical conclusion. Oh, this is this is what Joe Biden's turned into with the power of worms. I don't think they would be yeah. able to see it with the Hunter. People didn't even know hunters were worms, you know. Yeah. If unless you pay attention very closely to so the lore, what you're saying. yeah, yeah. Earthworm <clears throat> Joe and he summons a thousand worms, and he just—I <laughs> don't know why I'm always. <laughs> it is once an episode. But he, he goes like this, <laughs> and, a, and a million worms are carrying his feet across the lawn. And he he's doesn't not quite levitate. <laughs> yeah. He just. Yeah, he gets he carried. <laughs> Carried like by a sea sliding. of worms. Yeah, getting crowd surfed yeah. by worms. <laughs> that would... If that happens, we really do have the power of premonition. <laughs> if something like that happens before this episode comes out. That would be cool. And But I wouldn't actually, just as an end user of a car that has gas and everything, it is kind of a nice byproduct of our military always attacks countries that have oil so that we can secure cheap oil. I feel like Worm Biden, he's not going to want to go after those desert countries. Not good worm environment. We need soil. Yeah, we need rich volcanic soil. Fertile, fertile soil. You start attacking. Hawaii, you are mine. Yeah. I'm going to move the White House to a volcano. That would be so cool. Yeah. That would be, if he starts going even it's more like, like super villain. Yeah. 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 A place where it rains always. <laughs> but not too much so that I drown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a drizzle. <laughs> just a good drizzle. drizzle. Good constant drizzle. <laughs> he lives in a big greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, watch out for that bird biting dog! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, God, a robin! Get down! <laughs> Yeah, next assassination yeah. attempt is a guy opens a birdcage with a thousand <laughs> robins in it. Pecking away at his little skin worms. No, no. Yeah. Some sca evil scarecrow type that has sparrows and crows and shit. After they... Yeah. Oh, and then Rick Levine. Yeah. Go! Go! <laughs> yeah. Rick Levine why don't, unleashes why don't the presidents always... If they have assassinations uh, attempts, it's always nobodies. Why, why don't we have, like, just open villains? Well, not villains. Lee Harvey Oswald. He was, like, an actor, you know? He just that was it. That's John guy. Wilkes Booth. Was, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I meant. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'm really good with history. <laughs> Remember, that was, what, like, the turd president or something? I mean, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that is John true. John Wilkes Booth that is was, true. like, he was popular yeah, at the he time. Was. Yeah, we need to have Tom Cruise go down a zip line. <laughs> Well, I want someone off. to announce it first. Wait, but we're not. Where they're like, for that. you know, like a Mojo Jojo type. Where they're, you, yeah, I'm they're big arch. They're, I want, a, I want a president to have an arch villain, especially if he's like a worm president. It would yeah. be cool to have like just a nemesis. 
Uh, but of course they're they're gonna yeah. send like SEAL Team Six after him or whatever, which is, I mean, even I mean, a guy that commands a bunch of birds isn't gonna do much against a machine gun, I don't think. Well, yeah, and I imagine too, uh, once the birds tore away, his worm core, he'd just be like a fetus with his head <laughs> in the dirt, yeah. and then he burrow down, and ten years later, a new one will grow <laughs> out or something. Yeah. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Joe Biden has a cicada life cycle. He's like, I'll be back in 17 years. (laughs) I'll get that second term. (laughs) Even if I have to wait a millennia. Burroughs in the White House lot. Uh, How quickly would the next president, how quickly would Trump just like dig up, (laughs) dig him up and crush him on on TV? TV. Big hammer. Uh, I don't uh, the know. world could be so much more exciting. Yeah, it could be. It could, it could be way cooler. Although I'm not gonna lie, uh, getting Hulk Hogan to tear off his shirt on your for like to introduce you is pretty awesome. That's almost I, there, but it's not quite. It, it, we are getting. There. Yeah, if this was the '80s and Hulk Hogan did that, that'd be insane. But it would just. I mean, it would be way more important. Yeah. yeah. So it was, when was Kid Rock relevant? Like the 90s or early 2000s or something? Uh, 90s. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think early 90s would have been really good for both those sponsors. I mean, yeah, it really does. Joe Biden does not have a lot of ripped guys on his side. I don't know. I don't know what that yeah. says, but. <clears throat> a lot of aged out got, people. Also, if I were. Like one time someone tried to assassinate me, I would be in a mech suit or I'd be in a glass box at all times. I'd be carried out on like like 20 rip guys, 20 Hulk Hogan's are carrying me in my glass cage. <laughs> and I would be, you know. Get the, the Pope outfit. Oh. And yeah. have the, the, the Pope mobile where you're in a big uh, plexiglass box and get driven through. Pope something. outfit made of the American flag. <laughs> And I'd have Would a fucking hard, yeah. Hummer limousine where I'd be on top of it in a glass box. And it's the width of An the H2? Hummer limousine. So, I, yeah, I could walk yeah. around and, like, take a shit on my glass <laughs> toilet and then walk over to brush my teeth. I just, I'd live in a, in a bulletproof box yeah. at that point. I don't know what would happen if the Hummer were to explode. <laughs> I'd have to look into that. Yeah. Might be detrimental. <sighs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't think I... Uh... I don't think I would want to be president, especially at like these times. Like the the only president that I can really think of that just kind of he just chilled throughout his presidency and had no flack with anybody. Bill Clinton. Uh, (laughs) No controversy. (laughs) Honestly, he actually had kind of just a quiet presidency uh, besides getting his dick sucked, which I mean, if you're the president, why can't you do that? You know, Um but yeah, his was his was kind of quiet. I was gonna say Calvin Coolidge. He was known for oh. just taking naps during the day. It, when after when his when he won the election, they had to wake him up and tell him because he was just sleeping. Mm. And then he, uh, oh, but Joe Biden's a sleeping. One. <laughs> yeah, okay. But Calvin Coolidge was like a normal age dude. But he just like naps. Yeah, he just like naps, and he just kind of did absolutely fucking nothing. He just slept and hung out. And people were like, he wasn't like great, but he wasn't bad. He was just kind of there. He uh he was known for he would he would call for his assistant or call for the secret service and then he would hide under his desk. And they would they would go fucking crazy looking for him cuz he would just be chilling under his desk. What a little joke. Yeah, he's just like a funny little dude. But uh I think he did something positive. I forget what it was. He, oh, he he, he granted US citizenship to all the Native, Native Americans. Americans. Yeah. And they got that badass picture. This picture goes hard. It's Calvin Coolidge yes, in a war headdress. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see it right now. Yeah, that's cool. But besides yeah, that, I think I, he did nothing. And then he didn't, well, even, he didn't even run for a second term. He's like, nah. <laughs> uh, I did what? I, I did my I naps. Kind of just, yeah. I had I kind was running of out a, of nap time. Yeah, I had like a, my aspirations were I wanted to nap in every cool room in the White House. I kind of napped there, every, checked out every nap place, did all the napping I needed to. Now I'm out. Yeah, awesome. I wonder if that's more stressful or less if you're his vice president. <laughs> yeah, he had to like really step up his game because, yeah. like, God damn it, this guy's sleeping on. <laughs> Are you going to do anything? Being a, <laughs> yeah, being a vice president that just does nothing would be pretty awesome. Like most of them, it would be pretty cool just kind of. Actually, no, I don't want to be any... I don't even want to be on town council, really. Oh, yeah. 
It just seems like a lot. I don't want to be on an HOA board. Dude, HOAs I have are low aspirations. You know what's funny is I'm I'm selling my grandma's place and it's in a uh it's in an HOA. And I grew up hearing my grandfather and my grandma talk about the HOA like they were the most evil people on the planet and they hated them and they're always getting into fights with them and stuff. And then now that I'm selling the place and I've talked to the HOA people and I've spoken to other neighbors and I've spoken to my realtor about the HOA who's also he sold another house recently in the neighborhood. He's like, no, their HOA is great. They don't actually do anything. Um, and I've kind of re- no rules. <laughs> yeah, no real rules or anything. I realized that my grandfather was just a guy that just like liked thrashing against the the confines of his. You know, he was just like, oh, that's where you <laughs> yeah, that's from. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, he he moved the house in before there was an HOA, and then they they everybody agreed to be part of an HOA, and he's like, I don't want this shit. Like, fuck you guys. And so any little rule they came up with, he would like write letters and and just be like, fuck you. <laughs> Like I'll do what I want. Matter. You're grandpa in. You don't even have to worry about this. <laughs> He's like, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, HOA. He would fucking scream at them and like constantly just pick fights. And uh and I thought they were assholes and aggressors. And it turns out they're actually not. <laughs> I know I think Well, that's a luck because you hear a lot of horror stories from HOAs. I don't want to live anywhere where I've HOA. Although actually Unless I take it back. Chill. There is a, there's one instance. I, I know I've told this before, but it is it still cracks me up. This guy built a shed and the president of the HOA watched him build the shed over the course of like six weekends. And when he was finished, they handed him a piece of paper saying you need to tear tear down that shed because it violates whatever rules. And the guy l- looked through the fine print of the entire HOA like charter and found that you can do additions as long as like it's not counted as a shed if it's connected to the main dwelling. So he took like a two by four and he <laughs> stretched it from the top of the shed to the original house and then laid shingles on top of the two by four <laughs> and nail, nailed them in. He's like, it's attached. You know, you can't do anything about it. And they got like lawyers involved in everything. And they're like, it's technically attached, dude. And they had to drop it. What a win. Yeah. And, but the guy, but also, they ended up wasting if, a bunch of HOA money doing it, which is money that they would use uh, to repave the roads and stuff. Yeah, that, if there wasn't that fine print, I'd, I couldn't imagine the rage you'd feel. Yeah. I would have, like, they would have known it's the me, but I would have bricked a window or something. I would have, yeah. they would have made an enemy, for sure. Yeah, I'd write a note on a brick. Because yeah. I'm not really above damaging somebody's property if they piss me off like no way i would absolutely do it oops i accidentally just ran over your mailbox and then waited till you got it replaced and then i ran it over a second time like and then they do that thing where they fill it with concrete and you hit it with a bat and break all your your arms and your body (laughs) and then i come back with my kill dozer that i've welded up and i just and then i come from under the earth (laughs) and then i (laughs) and then i get my brain worms (laughs) Okay, I've got to see. How do you get these? Yeah, you get brain worms. Because if we can use them to destabilize someone's foundation and cause their house to sink down into the mantle of the planet, eh, that's worth getting brain worms. Someone eats food contaminated with the brain worm eggs. They hatch and, this doesn't seem superficial, sort of migrate through the body, how to- ending up in the muscles or in the brain. Now, the real question is, where did the brain worm go? Like when it died, yeah, does it you just sneeze it out, or does it just? It's just part of you. Did the brain eat it? Is he part? I get a little tombstone on my head. <laughs> yeah, uh, he. I'd have two Frankenstein bolts, but they'd both be little <laughs> little gravestones for my worms. Kennedy had traveled extensively to Africa, South America, Asia, and likely contracted the parasite on one of these trips. Are brain worms contagious? I... <laughs> When I make out with someone, I feel I'm like, what are you? oh, too much tongue. <laughs> what are you talking about? And their worms are filling it's my like the body. last of us when the, those yeah. things have the hair <laughs> that come out of their mouth. Yeah. It's your nose and eyes. Uh, that's gross. Where are brain worms located? <laughs> I guess they mean like specifically in the brain, but that just seems like a stupid question. <laughs> Probably in the brain. Cognitive disturbances, development, <laughs> delays, and seizures. Seizures. 
<laughs> worm-like activities. Yeah, have you heard about the like brain worms c- cat owners get? We probably talked about this. No, they get like. I mean, I could be totally wrong about this, but whatever. Sue me. I'm not even gonna actually read this article. Some cats have these like worms or something, and the people get them, and it makes you like more attached to your cat or something. It makes you like more obsessed with your cat or something. Stolt, we're gonna need to get you tested for cat worms. Yeah, Stolt. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stolt got like. I don't think they do anything to you, but make you love and appreciate. <laughs> now, if my wife could give me yeah. some of those, I want to get some family worms. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Grandpa, just... I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pet you and care for you and love you. I remember Stolt got like the most Mac Daddy phone I've ever seen, with just like a camera that's rivals like my actual cameras, and got it ex- exclusively to take awesome pictures of his cat. I was like, dude, this guy's too yeah, invested. That's He's, the worms. He, yeah, that's too, yeah. That's the worms, the worms money. made you buy that stall. You want a cat wheel. <laughs> I want a cat wheel. <laughs> I need more big want- carpet towers <laughs> to climb up. I want meow mix. I, think. <laughs> I just love the idea that they make you start acting like a cat or a worm more. Yeah. It'd be way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dalt? Let us know. Get to I. Uh, but also, Stolt probably knows exactly what I'm talking about. He would give a little thing. Actually, these worms are awesome. I love these cat worms. <laughs> They're actually better for you. They make you a little. I mean, well, I can't. I really can't hmm. shit on them too much. I mean, like I, I'm a guy that I abuse shrooms, and then they make me more in touch with my feelings loving. and loving and understanding of other people. Like why not get worms in order to love your cat more? There's nothing wrong with that. Also in the rock, paper, scissors of animals, battle beasts, <clears throat> worms. If Biden were to have worm worms mm-hmm. and his natural enemy were birds, getting some cat worms for a defensive cat versus bird. Yeah. Perspective would not be bad if you had the abilities of a worm. Yeah, because cats, cats don't fuck with worms. No, they they maybe a little swat them around, but they're not going to kill yeah. them. That's interesting. On purpose, you know? but a cat will kill a enemy. Bird. My enemy is my friend. Yeah. Okay. Now, who can the birds then? Birds and dogs, I guess, could hang out. <laughs> Dog worms, <laughs> just like <laughs> rubbing your ass on the carpet. <laughs> Okay, it's getting too complicated. Now, who gets the dog? Who beats dog worms? Those are the yeah. best worms you can get. Great, yeah. That's gonna be a hypothetical and, civil war. People think it's gonna be <laughs> cop worms, and I want to shoot dogs for fun. The worms have now. <laughs> the worms are, just are ingesting now <laughs> every eating every parasite, of worms. every parasite possible. Ah, tiger worms. <laughs> exactly what I need. The worms of a feline, <laughs> but greater. Uh, yeah, that. Oh god. Yeah, I, I, I do at times wish that was the world we lived in. Yeah, I know that'd be awesome. Fortunately, not. Do you want to do something a little bit left field, randomly, impromptu? Sure. Okay. Because this this will let you live into uh, another world, another realm. This will take your Ooh, mind off that. things. I have a tear maker. Oh. For. Uh, fantasy archetypes. Okay. We're back. We're there back. was one no, guy. Makers. There was one guy in the speak pipes. I was like, what happened to the tear maker? You got to do a tear maker. I was like, I'll make a short one just for this guy. The, for you, buddy? Yeah. For this one. Here dude. you go. Yeah. Okay. So the first one we have here is we got the good wizard. Oh man, I'm gonna be so good. Wizard, he spends his is so, he spends his time oh, poring over archaic tomes, searching for knowledge, peering into a scrying orb to monitor the kingdom's enemies. He consults the king on various magical threats. He holds the respect of the court, but he gets no pussy. And oh. he can make awesome healing potions, and he will live to be so old they don't really know how old he is, and it scares them. And so these these are. <clears throat> medieval fantasy archetypes and we have to label them on how much we would want to be these people because the medieval world kind of sucks let's be honest 
I got this idea initially from Alfie. He's like, hey, we could rate like medieval jobs. And I looked at all the jobs and it was like guy that that fletches roofs <laughs> or, or guy and, that cleans all the shit yeah, off the ground. Yeah, and they and they all kind of sucked, but they were there was so many of Port them. Chester. And I was like, why not make it Easy. like fantasy? Add like a fantasy element because it's even yeah, worse. A little in bit the, of whimsy. Yeah, a little bit of whimsy in there. So the problem I'm gonna face very quickly is I well, okay, looking at the second picture, I probably don't want to do that. But almost every one of these, I would just immediately want to put Ness. Yeah. But the no the no getting laid, but I mean, just being that wise. That wise, that powerful. Oh, oh, that something ails me? Let me create a tincture or a potion. Especially when a lot of these probably aren't, they don't have magic, you know? Yeah. They live in a magical world, but they can't. Yeah, they're being more be subjected attuned. to it. You know, yeah, uh, I would go S or A for this. S or A, okay. And I'll let you pick final. Like, wh which? What are you? How much do you want to be this? Um, I'm gonna tell you right now. Medieval dark fantasy worlds. There's not a lot of great lives. Okay, so even though there's some cons to being a, a good wizard, Merlin. Uh, there's it's doesn't really get much Gandalf. better than that. Okay. Um, what's this next one? Man in pillory. Spends his days in the pillory. Gets tomatoes and small rocks thrown in his face. That's it. That's, that's his life. It's funny. Yeah, it's, it's, a, funny, it's a funny life. <laughs> but boy, is it and short for that, and sweet. Yeah. I would think D or C. C just because... It's non-lethal. If it's, a, if it's a kind of a comical world... You could, you know, make little comments to the main characters and stuff, and be, they, you know, you'd be funny. Yeah. But also, yeah, D is fine, because okay. you are basically just being tortured <laughs> at all times. You're like that guy that you are talking about last night that's on the stretcher, yeah. and people are beating the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we like saw he, a clip. Being in this position, you would just, <laughs> that would people suck. could do anything to yeah. you. We, I found this video last night of this guy. Apparently, this woman was murdered cut up into pieces and put into a trash bag in new york city they found her body in the sidewalk and uh in the in, on the sidewalk in bags yeah. and the it made the neighborhood pissed off she was apparently a beloved person and um the police got a suspect for the murder and apparently during the when they went to go arrest him for some reason he ended up on a stretcher and so he's on a stretcher the EMTs are wheeling him out of the apartment and then onto the sidewalk and then into the ambulance. And he's handcuffed onto the stretcher so he can't move his arms. And there is an incredibly angry mob waiting for him yeah. in between his apartment building and the ambulance. And there's people just giving him haymakers, just full ass punches to the face. And like the EMTs and police can't are powerless to do anything. They're scared. And they're just like, get him to the thing. Like, imagine being that guy just held down to a stretcher getting the shit beat out of you one of the scariest positions yeah. i i think you could find yourself in so you know the medieval fantasy world is bad but man and pillory he doesn't get his ass beat like that he gets just yeah they just throw like and stones and at rotten him food. and yeah yeah rotten food if anything it's keeping him alive yeah you get a little tomato in your mouth or something <laughs> but i'd imagine being hit by a rock would hurt i was thinking like yeah. a small rock like not like a, like, not like a pea gravel. Yeah, not yeah, like a pebble, not like a full like teeth shattering rock. I was thinking like handful rock. Ooh, but no, yeah, that would just kill you. Just one would kill you, I would think. Right, getting bricked, hit you in the gut. You, oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that does. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. I don't want to be a man in pillory. <laughs> okay, well, good thing it's rated so low. Next yeah. one is evil wizard. Spends his time poring over archaic tomes, searching for forbidden knowledge, much like the good wizard. Peering into his scrying orb to monitor his personal Crazy. enemies, whispers lies into the ear of the king to his own benefit. The court fears him. He has created a twisted race of demi humans that he commands in secret. Gets a lot of pussy, though. Lots, lots of pussy. S tier. Cannot make healing potions, only poisons. Also, incredibly impossibly old. S tier. Oh, uh, well, oh, yeah, it would suck to be that old. Um, I'd imagine on the body. Yeah, but the fact that he can create demi humans and kind of like we talk about, kind of 
making monsters a lot. Yeah. And the ability to actually do that is just uh That's so cool. What a blessing. Yeah. What a blessing. Actually probably cooler than being a good wizard. Even though I'd like to be good. If I don't know, some evil wizard was like, Do you want to be my apprentice? <laughs> like, hell no. And he's like, Look at this little I've made a worm, man. <laughs> and he can burrow on the ground. Okay. Okay. I'm selling out. I'm selling out quick. Moral compass is shooting south. I would definitely do, do you want to move good wizard to A or do you want to keep them in the same bracket? Well, I think like that, because isn't it whatever is closer to the S is better? Okay. Okay. So I maybe put Dark Wizard closer to the S. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Uh next one is Witch. Spends time creating potions, curses, and hexes for desperate peasants with no one to turn to. She owns her own home on the outskirts of town. Uh you know, due to dark magic, she will appear hot and sexy even in old age. Ooh. But will probably be burned at the stake early in her career. Ooh. So it's like you get a good you're life. You're kind of on like the lamb. 30 years. Yeah, you're like on the lamb for. You got a nice, beautiful cottage. Maybe you have a crow mm -hmm. or a raven companion. You just better hope nobody turns you in, you know. That's so it's so fucked up, dude. dude. Like a good wizard, you know, he gets all the glory. It's it's the Which, misogyny of the times is unfortunately yeah. what a lot of this boils down to. So we would become a beautiful, sexy woman, mm -hmm. is what you're saying too, if we pick this. Yeah. B B, B Okay. <laughs> I mean it's you know, it's the brightest yeah. candles burn quickest or whatever. Uh this next one is peasant woman. Spends her time working the fields at a farm. Will be accused of witchcraft because it hasn't rained in quite some time. That's not good. No. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty bad. Yeah. That's, um... I would put that over yeah, I mean, there near... Because she's getting... I'd, in the picture, she's getting dunked into a river. And it looks like uh, drowned on like some sort of crane. It's like when your big brother, like, Keeps you in the water and thinks you're having fun. Kicks you, puts his feet on your shoulders and dunks you way down deep. And you get all freaked out. Yeah. No, I would not like that. <laughs> I'd rather be, I'd rather have rotten tomatoes thrown at me than okay. be dunked Okay, so that's D tier. Uh, this yeah. next one is, uh, let's see. Where's that guy at? Oh, Peasant Man. Ooh. <laughs> now that sounds a little better. <laughs> Spends his time working the fields at a farm. He's at the very bottom of the social hierarchy will be abused and or murdered for any number of reasons Ooh. and nobody will give a shit. His only power yeah. is derived from occasionally accusing an innocent woman of witchcraft when it hasn't rained in quite some time. C? <laughs> C tier? <laughs> I, yeah, this, C -tier I, mean, I mean, like, you could eventually become man and pillory or, you know, if you didn't have a penis, you would be probably the peasant woman that gets yeah. killed for witchcraft but yeah it's it's really a, it's not quite supernatural yet so you're definitely just like it's a bad life but it's a normal yeah. life you know yeah it's a simple yeah, life you know it's simple life. tending to your crops you don't own and stuff and <laughs> a knight could just walk by and gut you and people would cheer him on <laughs> uh it's not great good swing <laughs> sir excellently yeah. done sharp blade <laughs> sir <laughs> Uh, I see you I'll haven't been neglecting kids. your time at the whetstone. <laughs> <laughs> Left him yeah. in twain quickly. <laughs> uh, next one is Barbarian Invader. Oh. Kind of an overall badass. Spends his time pillaging villages. Worships the old gods. Whatever that means. Very cool. Consults very cool, a druid vague. for supernatural aid. He thinks wizards are pussies. Mm. Gets a lot of play with the ladies. Dies at the ripe old age of 30. Yeah, that's a tough, that's one. A tough one. Look, look at him though. He looks badass. Yeah, yeah I mean that's just classic. Yeah. that's just old school. That's it's probably. I mean, it said in the description he's overall badass. Yeah. It probably is one of the more badass options, but not quite it's supernatural. Yeah, it's and you die at thirty, yeah. which uh, time would be ticking for me. But if I could choose to live in the body I live in now and die at sixty, or be in a barbarian's body and die at thirty. I'd have a tough choice. Yeah. I'm going to say A. Is A tier all okay. right with you? Yeah, yeah, it's fine with me. Yeah, I mean, Conan's cool. It's like Conan. <laughs> yeah. 
when I, I, all these like are mid journey to, except for the pillory and the, the black and white ones, the, whenever I did like sixties fantasy, if it was like a barbarian, anybody with a six pack had the He-Man haircut or they have like the, just the bangs, the front bangs shirt right now. It's a He-Man action (laughs) figure. Uh, Oh yeah. Wait, also this is totally off topic, but thank you. Purples, sensei fruit and chrome slugs for making some of the designs on the merch store. Thank you guys. Shout out. Very talented. Purples, sensei fruit. The other person I don't know. Hit yeah. them up for commissions. Chrome I think slugs. they're all open yeah. for commissions. So, yeah, yeah. I will say though, Purples is kind of a diva. So <laughs> good luck working with her. But <laughs> no, she's great. Yeah. Is this next one a ranger or a hobbit? Uh, this is a. Hold on, I'm looking for him in my list. I kind of went out of order here. Oh, he's a highwayman. Spends his Ooh. days robbing wealthy travelers on the roads between settlements. Is constantly on the run from town guards. A respected regular at the tavern where all the bad guys drink has to give 75% of all of his earnings to the surrounding peasants or they'll rat him out to the guards. He dies young, but bards will sing songs about him long after he passes. Very cool. Yeah. Um, kind of like a Robin Hood that doesn't want to doesn't give his money to the poor, yeah. which I, I get. And also... Just kind of sitting in a tavern with a bunch of your, your friends, a bunch of your evil friends. Very Sounds like a good life. Yeah. Um, I would assume being like that kind of a bad boy, you probably get a lot of play with the tavern winches too, you know? Yeah. And the songs that would be sung. And the wanted posters. How cool would that be to be traveling on the roadside and you see, oh, some guy drew me. That, that would be my first thought. And then I go, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh that's like really close to what I look like and people want to kill me. Yeah. I would cut uh, off the bottom where it says wanted dead or alive reward. And I would keep the picture part and I would give it to, you know, a lady to put up on her, in her yeah. bedroom there wall. You go, uh, there you go. Mix your beans up. <laughs> look at this. Um, I would say B tier above, which I think so. Yeah. Above burning at the stake for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're still dying, but I'm assuming by like a, a night or something. Yeah. And then, just the glory of it, I guess. Yeah. It'd be a little false glory, too, because the bards would be like, he, was, he gave us money. <laughs> but really, you're like, fuck, I got to give I gotta give 75% of my money to these fucking I'd rather just peasants. get like a regular job, I would think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe that does suck. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, but the songs, if they're good, you know, it's cool. Uh, next one is Black Knight. Uh, spins oh. his days cleaving Martin peasants Lawrence. in twain. A dog of war for an unknown master can survive wounds that nobody else can survive, giving him an almost supernatural and inhuman vibe. It's like the mountain. Yeah, he commands authority based in fear. Nobody knows his true identity, and he will have copycats after he dies. Like, people will remember him. Like, oh, the Black Knight, Ooh. but they'll be like, yeah. he's still around. I could have swore the last one died. He'll just be kind of a recurring thing, and people won't really know you. Are you know the you. first one? Yeah, you you're, you're just one of you're many. You're one of many, I would assume. You're kind of like a, a constant. There's always, there's always a no, Black I'm Knight. I'm saying, if we were the Black Knight, yeah. Martin Lawrence, would we be the first one that creates the copycats, or would we be like the fifth Black Knight? Because that it, I'm going to say the first. Things. I'm going to say the okay. first. You set I, the trend. I think that's... Probably A tier. A tier? Yeah. And I don't, do you think that's cooler than being a barbarian? I mean, it's a toss up. Barbarian or Black Knight? I mean, you can survive. You can, glass. you can get into insane fights as the Black Knight. It's like, oh, so what? I got my leg cut off. I'm still going to be here. You know? It's but a flesh wound. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty badass. Pretty badass. I wouldn't personally, guys, I don't want to be that. <laughs> But if but I the options are limited. Yeah. Options yeah. are real limited. What if it's here. like that or peasant man. This yeah. is the guy walking around just cutting them in half. <laughs> I'd rather be that guy. Uh, next one's the white knight. Oh. Every black knight needs a white lady. Yep. <laughs> Spends his days protecting peasants in the interests of the king. Loyal to his king will die at the ripe old age of 28 while trying to save a damsel from a dragon's lair. Bards will sing songs about him long after he passes, and his family name will live on with prestige for centuries. That's, that to me is a lot more appealing than Black Knight. Yeah. Um, that, you know, uh, being virtuous. 
Yeah. But you you know, I you can't a survive of, a lot of shit like the Black Knight, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You def and also a little disappointing you died of the dragon. Yeah. And assuming the woman also is just well, what is, devastated by the what is a dragon lair if not a place where there's hundreds of swords from white knights that have tried and failed, you know? Very true. Because Very everybody true. knows a, the white knight doesn't kill the dragon. Shrek does. Shrek gets in there and gets the damsel true. out. Okay. We've all seen the movie. We've seen the documentary. Um I'm going to... Is that an option on it? <laughs> Shrek? Yeah. <laughs> ogre. Swamp Ogre. Swamp Ogre. Gets you get displaced the babe, but... from his property and has to go on a whirlwind quest. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm okay with that placement. I think so, too. Right He's now. better than Barbarian, better than Black Knight, A tier. Yeah. Yeah. I concur. Uh, this next one, as you can tell, is the king. Old king. Absolute authority and power to do anything he wants has become increasingly more tyrannical as time goes on. Peasants and the courts fear him. He's paranoid. Ooh. It's not like my favorite king archetype to it's be. It's not. No, there's always a downside. But it is pretty badass. Yeah. Be, you know, you're the head honcho. You get to kind of do whatever. Being in a constant state of paranoia would be... It would weigh heavy. Yeah. Um, and... <laughs> It depends on what kind of wizard you got. Is he feeding you poison and lies, or is he giving you like That's good advice? A, you, you know, know? Already, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give you props for your method acting. You're already getting a sense of the paranoia. Do I got one of them good wizards or one of them bad wizards? I don't even know anymore. How do I know? I don't yeah, even know. How do I know? You start asking him questions like, like, so you ever thought about making a twisted race of demi-humans? <laughs> no. <laughs> why, why dare okay. you ask? <laughs> Drink this healing potion that suspiciously yeah. has green smoke coming from the top and a little skull and crossbones. A little skull and crossbones means it's killing the bad yeah. in you. When, bub okay. when bubbles sure. come to the top of the potion and burst, they scream. Mm. They go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a healing Creamy. potion. <laughs> yeah, this will kill the worms <laughs> in your brain, sir. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> the paranoia worms. Uh, is this S or A tier? Or is it neither? Yeah, that, I feel like it's got to be up there because it has to be. Yeah, it's just my desire for power. But it seems—I mean, you do get absolute authority, which is kind of dope. But also, heavy weighs the head that wears the crown. Yeah. So, and apparently, you know, back then they had to do some stuff. I guess probably. I mean, not. Oh, well, you just I, let your court wizard deal with it. I feel like they it. spend a lot of time just sitting at court and at like answering shit. Oh, peasants like my freaking crops are yeah. freaking crikey. Yeah. My crops are dead. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> give him give him a corn Go seed. Go kill I another guess. peasant woman. Accuse her yeah. of being a witch. And I'd look it. at my knights and go, are, is their armor black or white? Where am I <laughs> in this moral compass? <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. I have power. Just kill that guy. Um yeah, S? I put it there. Or yeah, you know, it's probably S tier. Like I would rather be a wizard. Okay, but when the options are being killed at thirty, and a lot of them, yeah, remember would, he's an yeah, old king. He's got he's got gray hair. I definitely overthink these, but it also makes me immediately think: Am I living his whole life out, or am I like, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like I pick it, and I'm an old paranoid man? Yeah, or do I have some good years? I didn't consider that. I, yeah, I, I just assume, yeah. I guess, you, you become the person in the state of the picture that they're in. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess it's... Next one is plague victim. In horrific pain, dying from the plague. But he gets to take opium-based salves and tinctures regularly Ooh. that make him feel as if all earthly troubles have slipped away to another realm. The bliss experienced surpasses anything any of the other archetypes have experienced, but he will die in four days. So you get, you get kind of like an opium den experience. You're laid up on a pillow, and, and they're like, yeah, you're totally yeah. going to die, but here's some, here's some sweet heroin. You're just... Ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> more, <laughs> more. More. That has to be better than being drowned in a river as a peasant woman, I would think. I, I would almost put that as better than being a peasant man that gets cut in half by a knife. Okay, so C? Yeah, <laughs> C, it's, C. it's another one of those where you just kind of 
you know, live fast, die hard. Fucking, <laughs> you're gonna live and stories. die just in a bed. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. the idea. I, I just pick that option. I'm immediately transported to just. I am out of my mind. Yeah. I've got four days to live, but I don't know that anymore because I'm on another planet. <laughs> Uh, next one is uh, a medieval friar lives within a remote monastery, spends his free time brewing beer and spirits, quiet, simple, and peaceful life, will die a virgin. Oh, okay. So actually not a lot different than my life, <laughs> except for he makes the beer. He doesn't drink them. Mm-hmm. That's that's not bad. I on, I legitimately think like I was doing a lot of reading about medieval lives like I feel like the monasteries had it made. Like uh, yeah. that's as good as it could possibly be until uh, the Vikings came in and they started just oh, yeah. like raping and pillaging. Archetype yeah, comes in because they were like, "What do you mean this is a sacred place?" And they would just kill them. <laughs> Sac- not sacred to my old gods. <laughs> you new school. Hold on, bitch. let me consult my druid. Yeah, he says you guys are actually <laughs> pussies, and I'm gonna yeah. steal your beer and kill you and take all your gold. Oh, and you, yeah. There's no it's way. I don't give a fuck who you are. There's no way this isn't at least in the S tier bracket. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. They I mean, didn't say nothing uh, about, you know, there's a lot of people that are probably listening to this right now, you know, doing their blue collar jobs, probably getting no pussy and going like, that sounds like an upgrade from my modern life. I was just thinking about that last episode. There's a lot of people that are like, I am a truck driver and I appreciate the shout out. Like you guys bring us up a lot. Yeah. I think we should interlace jump scares into the episode. Oh wait, never mind. Yeah. The this screeching would be a total, tires. Like, hoist by my yeah, <laughs> Start screeching editing some tire screeching and tires and <laughs> at a random point. And honking of and horns. Then, one day I'm gonna be driving on the highway. Yeah. <laughs> the semi's gonna veer into me and cut me in half. Find out. I used to listen to this fucking podcast. <laughs> totally hoist by my own petard. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm okay with S tier for that. S tier? I wouldn't say it's the best S tier, but. It's up there. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. It's up there. Uh, it's a good life. Last one. The last possible life you could have in fantasy medieval world that I've constructed is the boy king. Absolute authority and power to do anything he wants. Loved by the gentry and the common folk. Spends his time being manipulated by the established court. An evil court wizard vying for power. Will become the paranoid old king later in life. Okay, so this like directly answers my question <laughs> from earlier. Like, am I the old king? Oh, I don't want to be that. I'd like to live. That's better than being the old king because you get you at least get some good years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get some good years, you get to party a yeah. little bit. But you also get to witness the, the you know, going yeah, into true. it, you're going to be the old king. It's destiny, okay? The, and you can't you change it. You can't change it. it. You know, you, you, every time he whispers in your ear, you're like, this guy's evil. <laughs> I, I can yeah. tell. I can tell. I know that it's not a health potion. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm fairly certain the media isn't out there yet for me to know this is poison, but this green bubbling stew is <laughs> certainly yeah. can't be good for me. Yeah, yeah. Mm, it's filled with mercury, <laughs> me lord. <laughs> It'll kill the worms. <laughs> All right, whatever. Yeah, I I would say that's S tier above old king. Okay, lots of S tiers here. Yeah, I for know. Sure. Well, it looks like looks life like- is actually pretty good in medieval times as long as you're not a woman. Yeah, or a poor guy, or a guy in a pillory. Or, yeah, or you've got, and it's not even that bad. Bad if you've got the plague, but the worst part is you only get four days of euphoria. Yeah, which I'm sure there's some. I've never taken, you know, opiates, but I, I'm assuming there's some time dilation. You'd feel, oh, like you're alive for <laughs> at least five days. Yeah, <laughs> if not more. Was it like it's gonna like feel, dread where they give them the slow mo like that drug that just slows down time? That would be pretty cool. Yeah. That movie, would, by the way, if you guys haven't seen the Carl Urban Judge Dread movie, I've been it's on my it's, list because a lot of people say it gives off raid vibes. Yeah, and I love the raid. It's honestly like it's one of the better what I envision like a cyberpunk movie if it was more of a bottle movie. If that makes sense. To be because it's yeah. weird future where 
know, people have like, I don't think there's any cybernetics actually, but no, there are, there's some people that have like, it's cool helmets. Yeah. I think there's some people that have like their eyes replaced with cameras or something, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, that's been on my list for a while. I need to sit my ass down and watch it and listen. It's just a good, like action movie. Have you seen the raid redemption? No. One or two, dude, dear audience. I've probably talked about this before. I'll, I guarantee I'll talk about it again. Very, very good movies. The first one, you know, it's got it's got like twenty minute build up, and then you're just in it. You're in the best hand to hand action you've seen in a movie, and some of the kills in it are just jaw dropping. Wait, the Mad raid dog ha- fight that has like the that famous like sideways hallway fight scene. Uh. Well, that's like old boy. Oh, that's old boy. They, okay, yeah, it's it does have some, you know, inspired from old boy, I think, like hallway scenes. Yeah. But every actor in it is just uh, like master martial artist. And the fight scenes are so fucking good. And the final fight scene. I mean, I've seen this movie like five times. One of the best fight scenes I've ever seen. I haven't watched the second one. But the first time I saw it like years ago. But I remember it also being really good. And somehow the villain comes back, but I think he just plays a different character. We were talking about this yesterday with Avatar. Like yeah. old Colonel's back. They do that, but I but I didn't mind it because because uh, you want because the guy's such a good fighter. I think they were like, oh, he's really good. Yeah. We- <laughs> he's another he's in one of the new John Wick movies, too. Just I can't emphasize enough how badass. The fighting is in the movie, and it's all the when they're shooting guns. I'm like, put the guns down because all the gunplay <laughs> yeah. just kind of looks like shit. They're just like, do, 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 and the flash is like, pow, pow, pow. it's a little over the top. And then when they get to the, it has a lot of people compare the new Dread, Dread, Judge Dread, that's his name, Dread to it, where it's just a crime building where like a drug lord lives. Yeah, and a lot of the people in it, the cops go in the premise, they go in to get him and then they lock off the building and then the guy over the intercom is like i you, like you get free rent forever if you kill the, these cops that sounds and then it's a lot like the dread movie it's like yeah, i same. think dread took a lot yeah. from it uh and then they basically yeah. it's like an hour of these cops being picked off and then <laughs> the main two guys just having like back to back to back incredible fight scenes Mm. A lot of rewinds will happen that way. A lot of kills where you're like, I got to see that. I've never seen that. Yeah. I've never seen a fight like that. Mm. I wish more movies did that. Yeah, Judge Dredd Very- is a lot of Carl Urban frowning with his little Dredd oh. helmet on. He's got a good frown. Yeah. He's, mm, everywhere he goes. I like Carl Urban. He's really pissed. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's good. He's good in the Riddick. Riddick or whatever. Movies, yeah. Yeah, he's good in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, even his Marvel, like he plays like the gatekeeper guy. He replaces like Idris Elba for like a little bit in the Thor movies. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Because he just has that famous scene where he's like, this is my stuff. And he just has like shit from Earth. Everywhere. (laughs) It's like Playstations and like M16s and shit. (sighs) Just like dude stuff. Have you watched The Boys or no? I've watched like season one. And maybe oh. some of season two. Oh, I won't give any spoilers. I just watched the finale yesterday. I heard it's, I heard it's good. I just haven't it's great. watched it. And I thought the rest of the season was a little just like, okay, like a little lackluster. Yeah. But I didn't mind it as much as a lot of people online. And then the finale just brought me fully back. Where I'm like, yeah, that was, you did, you did well. That's what, that's what Game of Thrones was really good at, where they would have a mid-as-fuck season, and then they would just have, like, one banger episode in the later seasons. It's kind of the trend yeah. they've gone on. Like, season one, good. Season two, a little bit of build-up. Season three, great. Season four, build-up. So, assuming the last season will be, because they're only doing one more, yeah. will be just, like, balls to the walls. Mm. Is it- and what? I was, I was just thinking, like, I, I went and got my hair cut, and... I usually, one. I yeah, I got all of them cut. And usually at my old barber, I would talk Even about, like we would talk about movies. That was like the things that we had That's in fun. common. I went to this, uh, that, that barber left. And so I had to go to a new barber shop. 
I have never struck out on a conversation so much as this new barber. He just sits me down. He's like, hey, man, you golf? I was like, no. Nah. He's like, uh, you watch baseball? Nope. Football? Nope. And he just like, you don't watch any sports? I was like, uh, no, not really. And he just like didn't talk to me the rest of the time. New people walked in. Everybody's instantly talking about baseball, football. Yeah. Were you or, in a sports class? I, no, I, I, no, it was just like a regular ass barber shop. All the other barbers are talking about golf. Every, it, yeah, it's like a sports place. Like that's all they know. Yeah. And I, w- I have never. I don't think I've ever met someone where I just can't talk to them. I literally could not even have a conversation. No with overlap. Yeah, none. Yeah. And then the real kick in the balls is, I, I have had a sudden turn in tipping culture where like. I always thought I was a good tipper and now like I am a good tipper. The fucking entitlement to some of these tips drives me up the wall. This guy charges me like 40 bucks for a haircut and then he turns around and goes like, here you go. Here's like my phone. I, cause he like did the card thing on his phone and his tips were, they started at 30%. Then they go to 50 and then they go to 75. And I was like, what? I mean, you like you didn't even give me a hand job or anything while you're doing it. Yeah, like, you didn't even talk. Yeah, to me. no like shoulder massage, nothing. No hot towel, nothing. I'm not giving you fucking fifty percent. I don't want to have sex with you or anything. Because I always feel I like a scumbag if you go for the lowest amount. You know, there. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I like tipping well, but yeah, there's definitely it's there's been an increase. Or sometimes they like look away. I'm like. Thanks, but I know you're going to, I know you can see it yeah. right afterwards. It's not really that anonymous. Yeah, it's, I get, you know, I get both sides of it, I guess, or whatever. I'm, I'm just too, I've now twice, I talked about the first time I did it. I didn't want to talk about it the second time, but twice just instinctively tipped when I've paid cover to a bar. And then I'm like, what am I tipping for? Like me having to pay to walk in here? Yeah. What what am I? Do? I'm like on autopilot when I just click. I just click little buttons. Little Wait, guy, if you pay just a cover buttons. charge, you're not supposed to tip at the bar. I mean, you can, but I don't. I don't really get. I guess you're tipping the door people. Does the bar? Uh, does also, the bartender get some of that cover money? No, no. Yeah. You tip the bartender on every drink, and I close out every time because I always forget my card. So I'm like tipping a fuck ton yeah. already. I just don't even like paying cover already. And then I was so, I was just so disappointed with myself. Cause I, or like a year ago I tipped on cover and I was like, what are you doing? I'll never do that again. And then it happened to me like two weeks ago where I, I was like, Oh, cover really? This isn't even a great bar. And then I just clicked the little iPad. And then afterwards I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. But also I don't want to be the guy that clicks no tip. No, yeah. None. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that I've realized how, oh, like the the one for me that that used I used to feel guilty about is when they go like, "Do you want to donate to this like charity?" Oh yeah, I round up. But I I, don't, uh, no I used to be like, uh-uh. like I would say it like low, but now I'm just like, nah, no, I'm good. I realize what it is is they they take your money and then they count it as their corporate, uh. you know, like. It's like a write-off or something. Yes, yeah, they they go like, oh, like people have agreed to give this much to charity, but it's from our corporation, so they get a tax write-off at the end of the year. And I'm like, well, I'm not, if I'm going to give money to charity, I'm just going to give it out of my own pockets to help my own taxes. I'm not, I don't want to help Publix out. Or the bet, my favorite one is when I'm paying my utility bill, they ask me if I want to give money to charity. I'm like, fuck off. Like I should just have to pay my utility bill and not have, there shouldn't even be a charity involved with my utility bill. It's weird. Oh, I was trying out these in ear headphones, and they are yeah, they my hurt little it. ears. They hurt God a while. damn! Oh, I think maybe my ears are tiny or something. Like the hole. Yeah, I don't know. You stretch those holes have to out. See if you can put a finger in there. <laughs> I can't even fit two fingers in my I ear. I think hole. I have those exact same ear. Yeah, I think you told me to buy them. Yeah, and you didn't tell me how bad they hurt. Yeah, I didn't know after a long time. I lost What's like the hours on the end of them. And so now they're just uh, useless. I'm like, I guess I'm just going to throw them away. <sighs> oh, well. Also, the uh, Pips onesie got in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this shit is not going to fit on that fat little monster. 
<laughs> well, the picture you this showed. Is a large. The picture you showed me was for like a Pomeranian, like a. It was like a Schnauzer. That was a, that was like a small in that picture. What what kind of what kind? This is for like. A, okay, do this. A kitten. Don't say it. How much stretch? No, I mean from the the entry point. I mean, this is the butt. Right? He could get his butt into the head. That might work. That might work. Maybe. I'll try it it's on It's going to be so skin tight. It's, it's going to look not, ridiculous. I think it's going to squeeze him really hard. Yeah. So He's probably going to have a hard quick. time breathing. He's going to be breathing really shallow. Like, but he's going to look so cute. Oh, like a woman so. in a corset. You know, he might faint. Yeah. But, boy, he's going to be looking good. But his tits are going to look awesome. <laughs> It's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, you remember last episode I talked about <clears throat> taking sponsorships, like personal sponsorships, because mm -hmm. of what happened with Voodoo Ranger, oh, which I still haven't. They did email me a nice, well, it wasn't really nice, but they, they offered to pay those months that I missed, but I still what, they heard? I haven't replied. <laughs> they, they saw the video? <laughs> no, they haven't seen the video. I've been seeing a lot of people tagging them and being like, we fucking hate you, which is not a call to arms, guys. At ease. Yeah. At ease. Um, I got a little shit on, but, you know, it's not the first time. Uh, anyway, yesterday I was looking at health insurance. Wow. That is uh, confusing and expensive. Uh, I have until July 30th to pick my plan or something. It said blah, blah, blah. I got two emails about doing personal sponsorships, and if I one of them's a one sentence, I can make ten dollars. Ooh, the other one fifty bucks, but I'm not actually going to take money from either of them because the guy was like, "I'll give you fifty bucks." He's like, "I'm a, I'm the poorest college student ever." His resume tells me otherwise. I think I might maybe even crack into some family money. Um, this one's just. Guys, this is Crinkmore, and it's a YouTube channel with two videos and two subscribers. And I looked at his videos. Oh, that's enough adver free advertising for you. And they're basically just raw footage of him playing a game with no commentary. So if that interests you, go check out Crinkmore. Cha-ching, $10. Gone towards health insurance. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Crinkmore. Uh, just really great video, really great two videos. Why, why do these sponsorships when you can simply do uh, a Star Trek Fleet Command sponsorship? And if you get and make fifty million dollars, yeah, you can get fifty thousand dollars as long as you get two hundred and fifty people to play the game for an hour and a half, and buy a hundred dollar ship upgrade, and yeah, buy a bunch of upgrades, and, and swipe their mom's credit well, card. And I'm trying to go a little more grassroots, yeah. so you know. I'm just helping out the community a little bit, getting their names out there. Gotcha. And then the second one I got, which this guy kind of in the email, he was a little rude to me. Um, so I will not take his money, but I will give him his advertisement. And guys, don't send me a fuck ton of emails after this unless you're going to put your money where your mouth is. These are the freebies to get you interested. I'm talking two figures. I'm talking $50 plus. Okay, because this is like really great advertisement. This guy, Maximilian, I guess he needs help with getting a woman interested in him. And he sent me his resume. Private high school, okay? He's going to a decent college. He has one of his bullet points. I'm not going to lie, Maximilian. First off, does not sound like a real name, but very fancy, I guess. Yeah. It sounds like generational his, wealth, Maximilian, yeah. right off the bat. One of his bullet points is, attended a private high school with an incredibly international student body. Okay. His interests are international relations, politics, East Asian <laughs> culture, and his skills are... Music and horseback riding. He has eight years of experience horseback riding, and he was part of the equestrian club. So if you, if there's any there's ladies no out there. There's no way this guy is in old money. I yeah. know. And he's coming at me with, I can't, I can only give you $50 because I'm so poor. Open up that trust fund. <laughs> start bringing out the racks. Yeah. 
And then he's included two photos of himself. Honestly, pretty scary looking guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But if you're a horse girl looking for a horse boy, mm -hmm. and in this picture where he's doing the smile, looks maybe one person out there will know what I'm talking about. Looks remarkably like the the key of awesome parody videos from early YouTube. The Justin Bieber actor. He also um, looks a lot like for the truck drivers out there, our bulk yeah. of our audience. I'll describe him for you. He looks like the guy that gets his hair pulled by the rat in Ratatouille. He's mm. got like that face going on. I think in this picture, he looks like Will. <laughs> uh, Will Kennedy, you call him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he loves volunteering. Um, and he, I mean, he's, he's gone to a lot of fancy schools. Yeah. The fact that he's part of the prom committee. Part of the prom committee. He did, okay. He did equestrian in high school and fencing. This guy's loaded. Yeah. So ladies, if you're looking for a loaded horse boy that is an avid listener of this podcast, if that's your um your type and you're nineteen, <laughs> um I don't even think I can give his email, but maybe comment below I want I want Maximilian. And he, he will get in touch with you. I just want to say for the record that there is two paths. And there's in one path, you're Robert Frost. Generational wealth where you have, you're part of the equestrian club. Uh, you have enough family money that you go on these international trips, private high school, stuff like that. You love East Asian culture because you've been there. Yeah. And you're into fencing because of its long storied history or whatever. Then the other side of it is this guy could just be a fucking dweeb. He could he could just be a fucking nerd and be another guy that's like, I'm into fencing because it's nerd shit, and I'm into Asian women because it's nerd shit. It could be. I did take a you know. fencing class in college because I said, Well, I like swords. I also that's took cool. I also took a fencing class once. Yeah. Because it's cool. Yeah. Um, and it made me feel fancy. Were you, he did not put his GPA on this, which is a little interesting. Um, you know, maybe email me your GPA. Yeah. I can get that out there. He's, you know, maybe he's a mix. He, his pictures he sent does not imply that he's kind of the cool old money. <laughs> he's looking a little more dweeb route, but that's okay because... That's, you know, that could be what you're looking for if you're, if you're the woman that listens to this. Yeah. If you're the East Asian woman that's looking for a fencing equestrian expert with old money, possibly. He did put an email, really sell how cool and smart I am. We have not done a good job at that. But okay. So that's uh, an indicator that those are his, how, his places where he's vulnerable. That's what he's scared of. Those are his weaknesses, mm -hmm. women. So if you want to. Yeah. So if you want those, a dumbass guy that knows how to ride a horse and do some fencing. I've got like his full name, his phone number, the current college he attends. You know what, Maximilian? Send me $2,000 or I put this in the episode. Your full resume. That's the kind of shit we need. To, that's the money play yeah. we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought about this a new way. Yeah. <laughs> You've given me too much. Yeah. You didn't e I didn't even reply to his email. He thought I didn't even see it. <laughs> it's you over send for me two thousand dollars. <laughs> it's over for you. Maximilian, you are gonna we're gonna Photoshop you in compromising positions and you are going to pay us or we are going to leak this information. It's over for you. One thousand dollars. Or I'm gonna send or I will do a call to arms. <laughs> And I know everything fucking about yeah. you. Yeah, and this ain't going to be a, a wink-type situation. They're going to know, okay? Yeah. The audience will know gonna, when that whistle is blown. I know every school you've been to. Mm -hmm. I know how to get to the people you love. And there's not many Maximilians out there, so I feel like easily trackable. Easily. Hmm. Yeah, I should... Yeah. <laughs> and his... He does not have a lot of work experience. I'm just going to say he's probably an easy mark. Yeah. Okay. 
Don't let him get you with a sword. He did do fencing for a while. And don't let him be on horseback because he has a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you catch him in an alleyway, though, and he has not paid me my two thousand dollars, I'll give a thousand to Sam. I'll give you a cut. <laughs> then you're my enemy. Yeah. So thanks for emailing me. Never do that shit again. Never, <laughs> never email me again. Um, okay, so that was my those the ad reads. Oh, those are good. Episode. Those are good ad reads. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you have oh. any more personal ads, we'll sell them 100%. You just send yeah, us your send phone me number, your name, your, where address. you live, um, any other personal information, then the message you want to get out there, and we'll handle it, okay? We'll handle it. Mm-hmm. And also, and, uh, tell us a little, you know, this is just a little fun part. Tell us a little secret that you don't want anybody else to know. Yeah, give us a little, just so I know I can trust yeah, you. Yeah, just give us a little something, a little something you don't want out there. and um, and. Just as an added little bonus, tell us what's the maximum credit limit on your card? When you tap your card on a table, does it make a metal clicking noise or does it sound plastic? Yeah. What color is your card? (laughs) What are your weaknesses? What are your fears? Yeah. Women like a vulnerable man. And that's what we want to sell. You want us to sell you to a woman? Yeah. Tell us what you're most afraid of. And I will, we'll get that out there. let's see oh yeah i looked at my bullet points first one i see so much death lately (laughs) that's just a sad point i wrote yesterday a lot of funerals lately yeah and shout out to my 15 year old dog romeo romeo best dog ever the one that sam saw and said wow that dog's already got two paws on the ground (laughs) um he passed away that dog should have been walking around with a fucking iv drip following it it was it it was right there at the end I am, I joke about it, but it is, it sucks. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad, though, he was scheduled to be put down today, or yesterday, and then he died two days ago on his own terms mm-hmm. from, he succumbed to his, dis, to his being very old. His oldness. Yeah. And also, no offense if you're listening to this and you just went, oh, I've got a 15-year-old dog. This isn't a little crusty white monster, okay? This was a beautiful lab mix that lived that long. So I think that's he over exceeded expectation. He did he did very well. Yeah. And he wasn't a gross little little monster dog. Because a lot of those live, you know, fifteen, eighteen years. That's a sad but a sad thing. Because like I feel like small little dogs like that are just I have a hard time liking them as much as a big old dog, you know. No offense, Pip. Yeah. You're a good size. But uh No, Pip Pip's yeah. like that bridging middle that middle gap. Yeah. You know. He's medium. Yeah. But like my Ish. my in laws have like a little just like a little rat thing. It's like a miniature uh, chihuahua that's like covered in hair. And I'm like, is this even a dog? Like is this even how much does like this a beanie have baby in- that you have to clean the shit off? Yeah, I wish ass. I wish dogs could speak. So that I could take a regular dog and have it talk to that dog and then tell me what it thinks of the twisted little tiny versions of dogs that we've created. I'm pre- I'm pretty sure it would view them like, you know, like those twisted race of demi humans that the dark wizard makes, yeah. you know, it's like, what have you done? What have you done to these things? They're twisted and gross yeah. and they don't think Somehow. as good as me. You can tell smaller dogs are super dumb. They- Some, yeah. I, well, even though. Some of the big dogs, you look at them and you go, nah, yeah, not, not a lot going on. Our other dog, but he's still alive. You know, if I could have picked one, I'm just joking. <laughs> but he's just got those big, uh, he's a big lab, just nothing going on. <laughs> Romeo, very intelligent, you can tell. Yeah. Our other dog, he's bigger. That should make his brain bigger, so I don't know <laughs> how it works, but he is really dumb. And I see a lot of big dogs like that where you're, you can kind of tell quickly. If you look at him in the eye and you see a glint of like recognition or something yeah. versus like they look like a cartoon dog. Yeah. The dopiness in their eyes. I, my uncle had a dog growing up that I, it always concerned me because I knew something was up with it. It was just like a land shark. It would just kind of roam through the room that you were in, weaving around, sniffing the ground. And you would go to pet it and it would just keep walking. Like it never stopped. <laughs> And said anything to you. 
It's a dog on a mission. Yeah, it was just always like just circling and and like you would try to look it in the eyes and it would just look past you. Like I have a I have shit to sniff. Like get out of my way. That m- might be a super intelligent dog where it views you as so inferior. Maybe it won't it was even on look a different at you plane. in the eyes. Yeah. I just I I I always looked at it, I was like this this dog doesn't even enjoy getting petted this this dog doesn't even yeah. care that you give it food it's like I'll I'll eat it as I pass by it would just go buy its bowl grab a mouthful and keep going <laughs> Shum, eat, one bite Shum, another yeah. bite and it just walked paths into the backyard you could see everywhere where it walked it was just very just a strange dog restless dog syndrome yeah. And I know what you mean, though. Yeah, you look into a dog's eyes, and sometimes there's there's something looking back at you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like Gwen. Yeah, Gwen, Gwen's got soulful eyes. Uh, yeah. My in-laws also oh, have an Australian sorrowful. shepherd, and it's got those yeah. piercing blue eyes. And you look into that dog's eyes, and you can tell it's like, it's thinking. Like, Gwen, I'm like, yeah. I'm not so sure you're thinking, but you're thinking with your heart. You know, you got, yeah. that dog has emotion. You'd be playing the harmonica or something. Yeah, this, this dog's soulful. But uh, yeah. I like to think if, if, my, if Gwen was a person, she'd be like Queen Latifah, you know, like a sassy black lady. I love Queen Latifah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Queen Latifah is much more than that. Great musician. Okay. Great artist. Mm-hmm. Great actress. Uh, but if this Australian Thank shepherd was a person, I would think more like a German doctor or something like very analytical and clinical, this dog. And uh it's cool, but and it figures stuff out. It's one of those dogs that's gonna figure out how to open up doorknobs and shit. You know, smart ones are German, <laughs> yeah. and the dumb. Okay, yeah. well, very interesting how you read dogs. But yeah, that's cool. Uh, there wasn't some underlying racism there. I meant a lack of warmth. There's a lack of warmth uh, with the Australian okay. Shepherd that I don't get with Gwen. Gwen, I want to cozy up I on. I would a couch almost with. think it would be Australian. <laughs> You think? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Pip's a little British lad or something. He would, you know, even when this guy's wearing a little cap and he'd be probably <laughs> asking for soup or something yeah. on the street. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, when I think I w- Australian, I think with- just an entire country of bogans. Like there's no, <laughs> I don't think, yeah, a lot of, you know, they, a lot of yeah, I don't think there's a lot of, uh, scientists and stuff there but i guess there is it's a whole working yeah, nation gotta be completely false yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> you know like whole people international words. people they, they look at the u.s and go, it has to be all fat people now there's like five yeah. or six skinny people here you know it's not all I've, fat i've seen i've seen them on the street yeah and i go oh my yes you you're an american they go i'm not, not speaking <laughs> i'm speaking english fuck <laughs> almost got him uh yeah Let's see. What's my other bullet point? Oh, man. Uh-oh. Oh, this was a question I just had for you because, you know, we talk a lot about movies. And you're obviously a man that, you know, you, you, you put in a lot of effort with videos and stuff and you do these little things. Well, the first question was if you could make with however you want unlimited budget, would you rather make your like perfect vision of a video game or a movie. But then, but, but then also all the follow-up questions are just about movies. Like if you could make a movie, what genre would it be? Answer these in order. I would rather make a movie than a video game. Okay. I figured that. And that's why the rest of my follow-up questions are about movies. Because a video game is not the story is very important to a video game. But story takes a backseat to gameplay loop. And that's really the artistry of a, of a game is it doesn't have a good gameplay loop. And I really don't give a shit about that, honestly. Mm. That's not my wheelhouse. I don't think I would even care to really make a good gameplay loop for a game. Um, it would be interesting to make a game, but I don't, I don't think I would have a passion for it as much. Movie-wise, I don't know. Hmm. What kind of movie? I I always thought it would be a lot of fun to make like uh Fifth Element. So we've talked about the Fifth Element so much, but I love yeah. that movie and I love to just think how bad that movie was in in the process of being made. It just looks so ridiculous. And it's also like obviously it's not shooting for high art, you know? It's yeah. just like an action movie. Like I would just want to make Either either something like that that's not grounded at all, or 
early Guy Ritchie movies like Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Oh, yeah. Like, I think that's something that's more attainable. But you said this is I get unlimited budget or whatever. I can just make it. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'd have a very tough. I I think I'd make with unlimited budget the worst movie ever. <laughs> I know. Made. I think. I think it'd be. I think the budget entirely too ambitious helps you stay grounded. Yeah. It, it no, it's, it's good. A good constraints. It's a times. good constraint. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Because my movie's gonna end up like that movie Nobody. We we're talking about like at the end he just oh, yeah bullets and wire work and explosions and. They got the fucking yeah. guy from Back to the Future shooting machine guns and stuff and rolling around. It, get, it would get too I, ridiculous with unlimited budget. I think I'd quickly try to make it too much of everything. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, well, it's got to be funny. Well, also, it's got to have the raid level hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mm -hmm. But also, there's got to be at least like 10 sex scenes in it <laughs> and a romance subplot. And then maybe a musical element. Yeah. But then it's like when I made my first Skyrim character, I wanted it all. And I made a not well-rounded character. I think, you know, I think by my fifth movie, I'm, you know, I think I'm getting destroyed. Have you seen Cloud Atlas? No, but I know that's the uh, movie. Is Channing Tatum in that? Or what the hell am I thinking? No, he's not. I don't think. Oh. Cloud Atlas is like several interweaving stories. Some take place in like the 1800s with like the slave trade and some take place in like the future. Some pl take place in like the 1970s. And oh. it's like the same characters recurring throughout history or the ancestors of those characters. And they keep like coming in contact with each other and falling in love with each other. And it's a really interesting story. But I feel like I would be inclined to, if I had unlimited budget, I would, there would definitely be like, there, here's some shit that happened 500 years ago. Here's some shit that's happening in the future. There would yeah. be mechs. <laughs> there this be is a 10-hour movie. Yeah. No, okay, I, I have it now. Okay, uh, we have, of course, going back to the medieval tear maker. Oh, it's gone now. Um, <laughs> oops, <laughs> I already closed out of it. Uh, we, I would probably have a story where a future mech gets sent back in time to medieval times Ooh. and tears the fuck out of knights that are being commanded by some sort of old paranoid king that has a brain worm and is, he's got a dark wizard creating worm people. <laughs> it's also a parody. It's also a political <laughs> yeah, parody. Yeah. An earthworm Joe comes out of the ground <laughs> yeah. at the end. Yeah. It would uh, just be ridiculous. I was thinking Jupiter Ascending when you said Cloud Atlas, which is just one of those movies that I had a lot of marketing that nobody's ever talked about it since. Yeah, and like Avatar I 2. I didn't watch it. Yeah. Avatar 2 did not, you know, yeah, it has no impact, but the water, dude, the water, the blue people, it all, <laughs> but it's so good. It looks so blue. Uh, <laughs> they're, also, they're while I'm in my interview mode would what what actors w living or dead would you really want in your film who would you want to star in it mm. we already talked Tom about Hayek. ben foster <laughs> ben foster is gonna be in it oh yeah, yeah. and yeah. i'm gonna and tell you're him gonna run I'm gonna into say, the you're gonna get double your salary but i better not hear a fucking peep out of you i don't want you to be <laughs> mean to anybody if you're mean to anybody this real mech that I've made for this movie, yeah, I'm going my to budget. Yeah, I'm, it's going to punch you in the sternum and kill you. But you are going to be wheeled in like Hannibal Lecter <laughs> until it is time yeah. for me to say action. Yeah, and then you'll be wheeled out <laughs> and put in your trailer, fucking like harnesses. <laughs> yeah, I just want to be an asshole on set, please. If you guys haven't seen Three Ten to Yuma, Ben Foster plays, uh, um, what's his name? <laughs> the the fucking main guy. Um, God damn it. He's like the bad guy's right hand man. Um, he's literally in like every movie. Yeah. He's Russell Crowe. Yeah. Oh, wait. Who am I You're thinking? You're thinking of Christian Bale. He's in that yeah, movie, yeah. right? He's the good guy. Okay. Russell Crowe's the bad guy. Ben Foster plays his right hand man, has a badass white double breasted leather coat on. Very awesome look. Um, but he, he plays like such a great bad guy. Ben Foster would definitely be in it. He would be Black Knight territory, I believe. Mm, in, very in cool. In my, uh, my medieval future epic. 
And Christian Bale would be the white knight. I would <laughs> pay Chris Tucker to come out of retirement. And he oh, would yeah. come back and play Ruby Rod, of course, but court jester. He would be Ruby Rod from mm. The Fifth Element, but now a court jester. I think he'd only come out of retirement if you made him the friar. It's just saying, like, super into religion. Now. Yeah, well, I'd pay him enough that he would be like, I yeah. would make him burn a Bible on set. Uh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> then I would definitely be awesome. have to get... No, that would, I'm not saying that'd be awesome to... <laughs> Just like burn up, but just to have enough money to be like, go completely yeah. against your convictions are nothing. And no. they would be like, no, no, I'd be like, okay, I'll give you five billion dollars. <laughs> oh, okay, fuck. I want you to take a shit and wipe your ass with the pages from your most sacred text. There would be people out there that'd be like, no. I want people to cry, you know, when they, then those would be the people you say, oh, okay, I can't buy you off with money. Yeah. And I press a big button on my remote and my Mac would go. <laughs> out of the shadows <laughs> oh okay oh you can't be bought yeah. i bet you can be scared uh willem dafoe would be my evil court wizard and he would definitely Great do choice. a lighthouse monologue like he does when he says he doesn't like his, his lobster <laughs> uh there would be that that moment so just be like the worst movie ever <laughs> where it, and then robert downey jr comes out as iron man <laughs> yeah. oh and so then. you found my mech my mech driver Wait. yeah uh, Billionaire playboy <laughs> philanthropist. Which is everyone's catchphrase. Tra- the best scenes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time traveler. Back to the future. DeLorean comes in. <laughs> yeah, Michael J. Fox goes. I guess we're back again. Yeah. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yep. Michael J. Fox would be. He would be the bartender in this world, and they would have him constantly <laughs> shaking cocktails. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, like every hot Michael, actress, I'll give you a billion dollars <laughs> if you don't spill this drink on my fucking set. Okay. Oh fuck! Qu- the the most evil director of all time <laughs> makes the worst movie ever. Yeah, but That'd be so but awesome. it would be basically like uh, who was it that that got fucked over so hard? Oh, it was Tarantino got fucked over with his seventy millimeter hateful eight. He wanted to put it. It was filmed in Panavision seventy, and. He wanted to put it in some specific theater that had the projector to display his 70 millimeter beautiful movie. And I think Disney came in and were like, we won't even put our movie in this theater if you don't give us this time slot that Tarantino is going to be showing his movie. Tarantino's like, what the fuck? Like, he's technically still kind of a small filmmaker in comparison to Disney. You know, like he. Oh, I mean, like individual, like like ever in the world. Yeah. Is compared I mean, to like Disney, the money that a Star Wars movie, even the worst reviewed Star Wars movie, is going to make way more money than the Hateful Eight. You know, so they basically bullied Tarantino out of the theater, which kind of sucks. But if I was making my unlimited budget movie, that's my playbook. I would be Disney. I would say. Every theater is going to have nothing but my movie. If you even display, like, I want to kick Disney out. I would kick Tarantino out, yeah. too. But every theater, every showing for every theater across the world would just be for my year. my future sci-fi <laughs> medieval epic. And, uh, and I don't care what the reviews are. I don't care how tired people get of it. It yeah. would just be, I want to have, like, Citizen Kane money where I'm just... <laughs> I know it's a, a hole, but I'm just filling that hole with cash for as long as I can. Metropolis. That, that was another one of my questions is, what do you think it would get on Rotten Tomatoes? <laughs> but the way you're describing this, this would be the worst reviewed movie ever. And also, it'd probably cause like rioting and like strikes. <laughs> yeah. if, That's if how you know you have an impactful movie-less. movie. If there's yeah. political strife because of it, social upheaval. That's how you know you did your job as a filmmaker. Yeah. Okay. It's on every streaming service. It's on every channel. <laughs> yeah. Feel, and it's. People will be getting VPNs slop. just to get away from it. Okay. They will be. Uh, people will be going to the underground, the dark web to I, get away from it. I have to watch my movies on the Wayback Machine. Because <laughs> in the good days, when it wasn't just this 10 hour epic. Yeah. I think you've got a good route. That's. That, <laughs> I thought you were going to answer like, yeah, I want to make a crime noir. So like, no, just a movie that's got everything in it. Yeah, everything. Oh, have you seen that Noah movie with Russell Crowe in it? No. It's a horrific movie, 
But at the very beginning, the first five minutes, they talk about the history of humanity. And remember, this is Noah. So it's at like the very beginning of humanity as far as they're concerned. And Wait, no, like Noah from Noah's Ark. The Ark. Yeah. Uh, okay. And um, he's talking about uh, uh, like he talks about Cain and Abel and he talks about like his grandfather Enoch who fought against, I guess, the ancestors of Cain who are like the evil people that die in the flood. And there's a scene where this badass guy, Enoch, Noah's grandfather, has like this weird plate armor on and he's got like a sword from God. And he just so cool. He puts it in the ground and it makes a wave of fire that just emits from it and takes down all these people. And he kills like 20,000 people with like one sword strike. And that scene would be in my movie, but it would be just like a burning of like plague victims or something. It'd be something to keep pestilence from coming into my perfect medieval world. But I would steal this- like the best scenes from bad movies and hobble together some sort of 10 hour epic. Uh, yeah, like each fight, just to show the stakes are that big, I'd have a shot of the world exploding, and then the next scene, they'd just be back on Earth, like talking and stuff. And then every time there's a fight, like the whole universe, like, and then the Big Bang brings it all back together or whatever, and then it goes a million years in the future. We finally rebuilt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, watch out, robot! We finally, we, we're back to medieval times. <laughs> oh, shit, watch out. It's, it's Iron Man. It's the, it's the Navi. They've come from their planet. They have space travel. Yeah. yeah I, I, now, what if you could only make a movie with like a regular budget? A regular like, budget? You've got like oh, fuck. A decent, like a like fifty million dollars. Like oh no, that's big that's, for still, Hollywood standards, that's still like I could do multiple movies. I could do a trilogy with fifty mil. I would think. Yeah, they'd all be like Buffalo sixty six or whatever yeah. level. It just oh my god, that'd be awesome too. To just <laughs> I'd walk, I'd walk into the, I'd be in the movie too. Mm-hmm. If I was the director, and I'd have his outfit on, red boots, and just <laughs> walk over. Selma Hayek puts her toes in my mouth. <laughs> And then, and then next scene, there's like a <laughs> the world explodes. <laughs> yeah, I would. Adam uh, Sandler, 50, all his friends. Fifty million. I would. I would probably go the Tarantino route and just be like, "This is my outward fetish, and you are going to, you are going to have to deal with it. And I'm cutting you a big enough I, check that you're going to play into it." I would try to make a movie about like a book I really like that doesn't have a movie or something I a video game I'm like a super big nerd about mm-hmm. and I'd be one of those people where I'm like God, these people they're not even fans they don't get it and then I'd make the worst adaptation of it ever <laughs> and then I and then what like Ender's Game me. I would like that would be mine yeah. I'd be like they fucked up that movie so bad I'm gonna make an Ender's Game movie and then I would drop the ball even worse I'm making a new Star Wars <laughs> and then it would have way too much in it <laughs> everyone would hate it mm-hmm. yeah I just like I don't know I just read a book and be like yeah, that that's easy. Make that a movie. And I'd be like, holy shit, you gotta fit this whole book in an hour and a half. Yeah. It's actually a yeah, short would, amount of so... time when you think about it. Like ninety minutes. Yeah. I mean that's like the minimum, right? For uh I think that's like considered release. just like a yeah, I think ninety minutes is like I don't think that's I think the I mean, minimum. That's pretty short for Is that short for a movie? I don't know. Well I could be wrong, but I thought like it had to be like for wide theater release has to be a certain length. Uh, some of those 40 minutes or less are short films longer than 40 Imagine minutes. Going to is a fucking a feature film AMC and watching a 30 minute movie though. You'd be like, what the fuck? Wait, longer than what's a feature film? 40. Yeah. Longer than 40 minutes. It I can bet be studios. Don't film. let you make like a 50 minute film. Mm, yeah, maybe not. Some of those I mean, like animated movies effort? are pretty short. I think the first Toy Story yeah. is pretty short. I think 90 minutes See? is like the perfect just quick movie. Longer than that and you're yeah, for, you're there's usually slack that can get cut out. I think if I I think my ideal length for me to make a movie probably 150. Hour 50. So when yeah. Maybe hour 40, because I wouldn't want people to say, 
oh, I don't want to watch it. It's two and a half hours long. I know it's good. They kind of need that length, but I can't sit down and watch this. Hour and 50 people would round up. Maybe hour 40, they go. <laughs> it's, it's digestible. Yeah. It's not a huge commitment. Oh, I don't American know. Film Institute and British Film Institute define a feature film as anything longer than 40 minutes, but the Screen Actors Guild sets the minimum length at 80 minutes. Yeah, I think I would just... I just try to get every oh, actor. Space I've ever Jam. Liked the it. original Space Jam was seventy minutes. That's all I needed. Yeah, that is honestly all it needed. I could have done for a little more mm. Looney Tunes. Yeah, I could probably get thirty more minutes of Looney Tunes in there if they gave me the script. But uh, the new Wes Anderson movie was forty-two minutes. It's funny as we do our two and three hour podcast. We're like, I would not watch something longer <laughs> than, than eighty minutes. That that just really drags on. But this is different. Yeah, this is different because we have a captive even... audience. Okay, they're just driving and they're like, I'm afraid to look away from the road to, to change the episode. I'm scared. If I jump scared yeah, now, yeah, yeah, now hit the. Ah! Yeah. Because they're, they're about to go change it. Stalt, you put in the squealing tires. You put in the. Put in police sirens. Mm-hmm. That always, I always hate when a song has that. And you're like, what? Yeah. And then you feel like a fucking idiot. One time we were listening to Rage Against the Machine and like, maybe 2002 in the car. And my mom heard at the beginning of one of the songs, there's like a air raid siren. And my mom grew up, you know, with the cold war. She actually pulled the car over. She's like, everybody get in the ditch. Everybody get in the ditch. Is that where she- <laughs> and I'm like, she's like, a bo- it's bombs. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like the beginning of the song. Apparently those are air raid sirens for like, watch out. The Soviet union's bombing us. I, and you're supposed to get in a ditch. Yeah, you're supposed to like get low or something. I don't know. She went through all that shit. I've grew. I've grown up in nothing yeah. but peace times. Where the only thing we yeah, fight for never is, been is oil. Oil. Yeah. What if she was like, kids? I just <laughs> this is the end. Like I had the fog my moment. Favorite, <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Yeah. She turns yeah. around and sh- shoots me and my yeah. brother. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna let those red commie <laughs> bastards take my baby. <laughs> Shoots you in the stomach. <laughs> oh, wait, shit, the gun jammed. I can't shoot your brother. Shoots you in both legs. Oh, God. Stop moving around so much. Just wink. Yeah, it shoots me like eight around. times non lethal. Oh, oh, I think you clipped me. I think you clipped me. Have you seen when, uh, when Joe gets his legs back and Family Guy? Oh. He get he gets like like spine surgery and gets his legs back and he turns into an arrogant douche oh, f- and funny so, uh, yeah <laughs> everybody hates him and his wife wants her husband back and so she's like I'm gonna put you back in that wheelchair so I can get my Joe back and she's like is pregnant as fuck and holding the pistol like this and does that basically like wings him like seven oh. times oh. and he's just like give me the gun I'll do it <laughs> and he just shoots himself in the back. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she ends up like shooting yeah, each yeah. leg like three times. He's like, ah! Uh. <laughs> Put on your system of a down CD in your mom. Just shoots herself in her head. It completely explodes. Uh. <laughs> and then you guys are like, Whoa. you would never know. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she had to explain to us why. <laughs> like it was yeah. a long conversation. Now uh, the siren means, devil music. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Man, that's. Uh, yeah, I'm glad she didn't kill you. Guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> <Glad she, laughs> yeah. funny. Oh, jeez, moms. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Anyways, you want to call it here? Then you have stuff to do. Uh, sure. Don't put this on me, but yeah. yeah, I mean, okay, I do in like an hour. Okay. Yeah. Um, guys, this has been the premiere July episode. <laughs> this is the second premiere <laughs> episode. Nice, tight, probably. 140 after cuts. Yeah. There was a slight bathroom break. Yeah. And uh, we. Stalt's going to go through and make sure we didn't did say anything horrific job. about the, the Trump assassination thing. Yeah. Um, he'll see if anything didn't land. land and he'll cut it out. Yeah. So it's going to be a 10 minute episode. <laughs> yeah, talking about yeah. Ear- earthworm Joe. Yeah. <laughs> And then it'll just kind of fade to black. <laughs> yep. uh, but thank you yeah. for watching the patron episode. We got a really big plan for this month. It's going to be 
really special treat. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Later.